Good day traders, um, my name is Sithian Gemma from Quick Trade. Uh, we are going to be doing technical analysis. Uh, welcome to our session. Uh, I think I'm seeing Sophie for the first time. Hendrik van Skalkweg, I don't know whether I've seen him before. Gert, you are our regular. Monica Krobler, uh, we've seen her before, I guess. Um, who is new, guys? Please let me know. Please send me an... Um, Please send me a message there and let me know if you are new. Okay. Sophie, you are new, okay. Uh, Sophie's new, okay, uh, Lorenz is there. Okay, guys, we only have one uh, new person, uh, uh, I mean, in attendance. Uh, could you please, guys, uh, to, I mean, share with me anything that you have, um, I mean, from your analysis that you've been doing on your own? Is there anything that you would like, sorry, that you'd like us to have a look at? Is there anything specific, any stock, any currency pair that you want us to check? Please. Let me know if you have anything. <clears throat> nothing, guys. Nothing at all. You haven't been looking at uh, anything. You don't have anything that you'd like to share with me where you have some issues. Oh, you were here uh, a while ago. Okay, 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 that's fine. Oh, so you, you don't have any issues, guys. Okay, it's fine. Um, sure, okay. Um, Lawrence, uh, is, everything, is everything okay with you? You don't have any issues. Is that what you say? <clears throat> Monica is also new. Lawrence, I'll let you. She'll let me know. I'm here to learn what you have for me. Okay. It's fine, Hendrik. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, which uh, which stock would you like me guys to, to to look at? Is there anything specific that you want me to uh, to check out? Uh, but what stands out for me today is that um, <clears throat> financials are doing well today. Uh, on the back of uh, the 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 rent strength, uh, the, the 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 U.S. dollar weakened against um, the 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 rent uh, yesterday and today. So uh, we're seeing uh, some uh, hi Anilia. We're seeing some uh, financial stocks picking up, doing well today. So uh, we'll uh, have a look at uh, at that and understand maybe what's likely to uh, happen going forward. Uh, those that attended our our uh, previous sessions um, on uh, technical analysis during our, our, our webinar engagements, uh, we spoke about the US dollar rand. Uh, we said that we were looking at the rand maybe getting to, uh, I think I said 11, sorry, 1290, 1290. And we're, we're short a couple of cents of hitting uh, our target of 12.90. We just went to 11.88, and the price started um, retreating, coming back down. So uh, we'll see what happens maybe uh, over the next couple of days um, on the rand against the, the U.S. dollar. It's possible that the, 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 sorry, the U.S. dollar is going to strengthen uh, once more against uh, the rand. Uh, let me show you what we were looking at there um, on the on the rent. Uh, 
Okay, let's remove these lines. Uh, let's remove them. <clears throat> okay, this is the 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 the, the monthly time frame. Uh, we are using a line chart. We're using this just to pick the the turning points. This is the turning point I'm I'm looking at on the on the rent. Uh, should the price maybe uh, come off a bit on the US dollars? Are. Okay, uh, this is our support here at the bottom around uh, 12, uh, 12, 13. And uh, at the top there, uh, this is where our resistance is on uh, on the South African rand against uh, the US dollar. Uh, we are checking this because I mean there are so many stocks that rely on uh, the US dollar or that react to the US dollar rand. So uh, that is why we need to have a look at this. Okay, uh, that uh, range that we have there is 1292 and 1284. Uh, we touched this range uh, yesterday and we started coming down. So this was a sign that the market was um, likely to come down uh, after that. And uh, the market is down <clears throat> today. Uh, over Sorry, the, re the US dollar is down over 1% against uh, the US dollar, against the, the rent. I expect maybe, I don't know what will happen exactly today, but I mean, if we get a price, if we get um, our price maybe a crossing below uh, the moving average here on the daily, we could maybe see the rent maybe uh, coming down to touch maybe uh, 1240 and perhaps even um, and perhaps even 12 uh, 1220, you know, uh, depending on how uh, severe uh, the drop is, uh, it's possible that we could see that. But I mean, the overall trend um, on the rent is still. Uh, it's still weaker against the US dollar. I, I think that the US dollar is still going to strengthen against the rand. And uh, there are levels that I spoke about um, in our morning meeting with uh, my colleagues here. I was looking at levels such as um, 13. Uh, if we take out 13, then we're looking at maybe 1326, 1325. After 1325, we may even see 1340 uh, on the rand. Uh, against the US dollar, but I mean, uh, you know, nothing is is certain in this game. Uh, that's just my analysis. It's possible that maybe I can get it all wrong. Maybe when you check in the next three months, but at the moment it looks like the rent is just not uh, doing that well. Uh, <clears throat> it's not doing that well, so uh, that's what I'm looking at. The, the US dollar is just um, pulling back a bit. Uh, it's possible that we could come down to maybe 1240, uh, or maybe we can just uh, turn around around 1250 and move higher again. But I mean, there's a lot of selling pressure around uh, 1290, uh, 1285 levels on, uh, on the rent. Uh, there's a lot of uh, selling pressure there. Uh, there's another stock that we uh, mentioned. We mentioned Sasol. Let me see if Sasol is still <clears throat> underperforming uh, today. We said uh, Sasol around. Um, we said Sasol around 495. Uh, we should expect to see maybe a little bit of uh, selling uh, coming in. And uh, yesterday we had. Yesterday we had this bar here, this uh, bar or this uh, bearish pin here. This is a bearish pin. This pin, uh, you see this long pin uh, above uh, this small head. This is called a, a reversal, a bearish reversal pin. And uh, today we are not really doing uh, that uh, bad. Uh, the market is just flat, um, up only uh, nine basis points. Uh, but I expect to see a lot of selling pressure around 490, uh, 485 levels on um, the, the price of um, Sasol. We're using the 
you know, the monthly chart to make uh, those analysis. Uh, I don't know if it's really going to play out the way that I expect it to. It may decide maybe to just go up. Let's do the line chart to get those support and resistance levels. That is your that is your your resistance there at the top. It's around 483. Uh, let us put it on these. Okay, uh, anywhere around uh, 490, 485 levels. You said you expect the price to come down. Um, since 2015, we haven't had a any monthly close above um, 480. Well, 483 on on, on Sasol. So. Uh, Okay, guys, sorry about that. Uh, Monica, if you are using a mobile device, I'm very sorry, you won't be able to see my screen. Uh, you need to use your laptop or your desktop, uh, then you'll be able to see the, uh, the stuff that I'm demonstrating on my end. I'm very sorry about that. I'm very sorry. You won't be able to gain access if you are using the, the laptop. You can only get my voice, but I mean, you won't be able to see what I'm showing. Okay, uh, so uh, on well, I mean, we are looking at that uh, for uh, 85, 490 area. If at the end of the month we are trading below that area, there's a good chance that maybe in June we are going to have a downturn on the price of Sasol. But it's, it's, it's not concrete yet. Uh, we'll see uh, how it plays out over the next uh, couple of days. Uh, okay, I was just showing you uh, some stocks that we've spoken about uh, in these uh, sessions. Uh, Anilia, I think you have something that you'd like to share with us. Uh, what is that particular stock? Hendrik, okay, it's fine. I see that you're busy typing me a message there. Please do. Oh, okay, Hendrik, it's fine. We'll have a look at DSY. Uh, let's actually have a look at DSY. Then we'll have a look at um, financial, sorry, famous brands and uh, all mutual. Oh, hi, Faith. I see you've uh, just joined us. Uh, hi, Buani. <clears throat> okay guys um before we carry on uh, this is the part that i want us to um i mean touch on uh, that is uh, the south african rand versus the us dollar i i expect uh, some further weakness on the on the on the on the on 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 on, on, the, on the rent against the U.S. dollar, so that should have some negative impact on financials or financial stocks. Uh, today we are having a little bit of a good day uh, on financials because the rent is strengthening, but I mean I do not expect this strength to <coughs> carry on for uh, too many days. I expect this strength to uh, disappear. Uh, anytime soon. So if that happens, there's a good chance that our financials are going to take a knock. Uh, the chart that I have um, on my screen is uh, that of um, the DSY. Uh, DSY, currently we are still above our moving average, but I mean there's a good chance that uh, we may see uh, the, the stock uh, like uh, DSY maybe closing below its moving average at the end of May. And if that happens, there's a good chance that we're going to have a down month in June. Uh, I mean, that could actually take us down to maybe 155, 155, 150, sorry, 150, 145 um, levels. I'm, I'm looking at that. I'm not really uh, quite a bullish on DSY at the moment. Uh, I would actually look to buy. I mean, maybe DSY around uh, 150. I think it makes sense to get it around 150 uh, in my view. Uh, although we are still above uh, the 200 day moving average or the 10 simple moving average uh, on my uh, monthly chart here. Let us check the weekly to see how the weekly looks. 
the weekly we are below uh, the weekly moving average we are below the weekly moving average uh, on the weekly uh, time frame uh, the rent still uh, looks like uh, it's going to decline a bit over the next uh, couple of days so uh, for that reason uh, I'm, I'm not really uh, too bullish on um, uh, financials uh, including uh, discovery so uh, I don't know, I'm looking at the price maybe decline and coming back down maybe to uh, around 150, 155. I understand that we have uh, very good support around uh, 152. So that's where I expect the price to really uh, come down to over the next um, couple of days. So I'm not really bullish DSY uh, at the moment. Look, it's trading below its moving average. Let's check the daily time frame. Daily time time frame, we are also trading below uh, the the moving average there. Uh, we are trading below the moving average there also. So for that reason, I'm not so bullish uh, the stock. Uh, let's first see it maybe break above 167. If you can get a break above 167, maybe it's possible that you could get to 190, 192 there at the top with a DSY. Hendrik is busy typing a message. Okay, Hendrik, I'll wait for you to finish typing. Did you say that we must wait after? No, no, no. I said um, we must wait and check uh, where the monthly chart closes at the end of May. Uh, end of May, we want to check how the monthly uh, chart closes. If it closes below the moving average, uh, that would be your early warning that uh, the price is likely to come off a bit more. Perfect. Uh, okay, let's have a look at uh, old mutual. Okay. <clears throat> uh, DSY has been on the rise since uh, I mean mid uh, 2017. Uh, that was in July, and it shot up. Uh, it started from uh, around 33 and it showed up to uh, 40, 40 levels. Uh, right now we are stuck between 42, 42 and uh, I would say 40, 43. 42, 43. Uh, it looks like there is a possible double top formation brewing. Uh, I mean, uh, brewing uh, here. Uh, if you look at this. Uh, you see this top here, and the market is creeping up towards this area here. I think uh, there's a good chance that you could see, uh, I mean, all mutual, uh, I mean, moving higher towards that 45, uh, 50, 45, 23 area. That's when I think that we could find a lot of orders, uh, a lot of sell orders waiting to push uh, the price down if this uh, double top formation. Uh, where to work. If we, if we get there and the price starts coming off, it's possible uh, that um, uh, there will be sellers uh, waiting uh, here, waiting to push the price uh, lower, maybe back to these levels here. At the moment, uh, it's, it's actually a bit confusing. To me, Old Mutual is actually very strong. It looks very strong. Every time it gets to 140, it gets to 42, uh, they buy it and push it higher. So for that reason, I think Old Mutual is still a, a good buy. Again, if you look at uh, this uh, support line that we have here, we are just above our moving average. We are just between this 42 and 43, uh, 43.50 area. Uh, it, to me, it looks like it should still pick up a bit and move higher towards that 45 to fulfill that uh, double formation that I think is busy forming up there.
4180 there. I think it's good support on old mutual. We just need to get a break above our moving average here on the daily time frame. On the daily time frame, we need to get a break above our moving average here. And if we close above 4310, there's a good chance that we're going to go to 44. Uh, if we take out 44, then we go up to 4550. 4550 is the main one that we are looking at that should actually uh, be a decider whether we are breaking out to move higher or we coming back down. But I mean, if the rent continues to weaken, there's a good chance that our financials are going to take a knock. Uh, Anilia, are you, are, you, are you happy with that one? Is there anything that you think that maybe I should still maybe try and explain? Is anyone, I mean, is everyone happy? Is there anything that is not clear? Okay, uh, let's look at uh, famous brands, FBR. Uh, FBR, I think it's famous brands. <clears throat> uh, famous brands is sub I mean has some good support uh, around uh, ninety seven every time the price gets down to uh, this area here in 97 uh, there are buyers that uh, crop up and start buying up the price and pushing up the price so um, I'm looking at this one and I'm thinking uh, it, it is below the moving average but I mean yeah, I mean where it is now uh, is we are around 102 it's possible that uh, if uh, the sellers push the price harder we could get to like uh, well I'm mean, 94.50 we could get to 9450 95 around 9450 95 uh, i think there's a lot of um there's a lot of buyers waiting there but at the moment it's possible that uh, the price could come down to 9780 98 and uh, finally down to 94 95 area uh, this area has been our support let me try and highlight this one i'll make it bigger you see, if you look at that thick blue line at the bottom, uh, that that support area has been uh, there since uh, 2013, 2014, and 20, 20, 2013, 2014. We tested it in 2017. In 2017, the price bounced off and went up to 125. And this time, it looks like we are coming back once again to test that support of 94.95 there. When the price gets there, there's a good chance that we're going to get maybe sellers coming in and pushing the price higher again. So uh, we will uh, keep an eye on that area to see if we do get a bounce of that 94, 95 area. So, but I mean, the first one we're looking at, we're looking at um, 97, 97, 80. Uh, or 98 we're looking at that one if that one if that if 98 fails to hold the price we're coming back down to 94.95 if we bounce off 94.95 we are going to move much higher back to uh, our levels of 115 116 from there 
maybe 127 130 that's what i see on um on famous brands at the moment it's not looking uh too bullish uh it's looking uh it's, it's, it's looking uh quite bearish um in the short uh in, in in the short term i think that will come down to maybe 98 from 98 we're coming back down to 94 95. we'll have a look at uh, we'll have a look at vodacom now now we'll have a look at vodacom anilia are you are you happy with that do you have any more questions uh on famous brands Okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, what a com. Okay, let's do it for a com. Uh, we looked at Vodacom <clears throat> again yesterday. Uh, Vodacom is trading below its um, its monthly uh, its monthly uh, below. I mean, sorry, above its monthly. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean the, okay, it's trading below. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it's trading below its um, ten simple moving average on the monthly time time frame. And the first time it broke below was in March, April. We closed below. Um, May, uh, we haven't finished um, the month of May yet, uh, but I mean, we are still trading below our um, moving average there. Our moving average is sitting at uh, 157.53, and the price is currently uh, trading uh, below that, although we have a very good day today. Another thing that I want to highlight to you is the fact that each time it gets to this zone here, uh, that zone is 152 and 145. We get buyers coming in and pushing the price up. So yeah, that area there, in my view, is very strong uh, on Vodacom. Although we are trading below the moving average, uh, it, well, I mean, it's, it's safer maybe to trade uh, when the price is uh, above the moving average. But I mean, if you look at it, it's, uh, it's, it's had a, a very good uh, couple of uh, I mean trading hours uh, since we uh, opened this morning. Uh, it's, it's looking, it's looking, it's looking okay. But I mean, uh, it's worrying that it's still trading below the moving average on the monthly. So uh, you must be very careful when trading that one. Uh, you mustn't uh, be aggressive. Okay, you mustn't be uh, aggressive. Let's uh, let's do this. Okay. Uh, another thing, uh, let's. We, I've now moved to the uh, the, the the weekly uh, time frame. Uh, the weekly time frame will close below the moving average, the weekly moving average. And if you look at uh, the moving average, is pointing down, uh, which means that there could be more uh, downward uh, pressure on this stock going forward. Uh, but what happened uh, yesterday is that the price shot lower, and today it's up. It's forming. <laughs> uh some is it's forming something that looks like um 
uh, reversal pin bar, but I mean, the week is not over yet. It's still early days, so we cannot use that uh, to judge whether the stock is bouncing or not. Uh, we'll just wait and see what happens. But I mean, let's check if this market closes above 152.71 today. Uh, I suspect that this price could be stuck between 152.71 and 150 uh, for the next couple of trading sessions until we break below maybe 150. If you get a break below 150, we're coming down to test 145. If 145 fails, we're coming down to test 137. Okay, on the daily, uh, okay, uh, the daily we closed below our, 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 our resistance yesterday. Oh, well, I mean, yesterday it was support. Uh, when you close below it, it became a uh, resistance. So this morning the price just went through uh, all those levels, uh, one and two. So uh, it looks positive. The stock is up uh, for over 4%. So I don't know what's going to happen here. Maybe you're going to see maybe the price coming back down again. Ah. I really have no uh, clue, uh, but I mean, if you look at the monthly and the weekly, they are not looking uh, that well. So personally, I'd wait maybe for the price maybe to come down to 145. Uh, if not 145, maybe around 140, 137, around that area. Uh, you're welcome, uh, Hendrik. <laughs> Oh, great stuff, Anilia. I see you shot um, FBR. Well done. Okay, guys, uh, to those that are starting out, I know that uh, some of you do not really know what is going on here. I think uh, that's in Tombi. Uh, Faith in Tombi and Sophie. Guys, please allow me a chance to go back to these guys and show them uh, how to analyze the market using the moving average to decide whether to buy or to sell the market. Please allow me the chance. I just want to quickly go there and check. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'll use my... Okay. Let me check here. Okay. Let me, let, let me use it. Let me use Impala this time. Let me use Impala. I hope it looks... Good. I'm using Impala. This is an example of a uh, declining market. This is an example of a declining market, guys. Uh, the stock that I have, I have Impala or in Implax. Uh, every time when you see, uh, this is the monthly time frame I'm using here. Every time when you see the price of the monthly time frame breaking and closing below the moving average, that means that that market is declining or is likely to decline next. Uh, we had a break below the moving average that was back in 2014. Uh, that's when all the commodities were just declining uh, at a time, I think. Uh, those, I mean, that's when they started declining, 2014. Uh, 2014, we closed below the moving average and the price started going down. And the moving average at the top was our resistance. We, we declined, declined, declined until we got to uh, <clears throat> January 2016. Uh, in March, we closed above the moving average and we saw some buyers coming in, pushing the price up. But I mean, that was uh, not really <clears throat> uh, sustainable. The price started sagging once more and we went below the moving average. Uh, when we went below the moving average, it was uh, November 2016. So for the rest of 2017, Impala was just underperforming. Uh, why was it underperforming? It was trading below the moving average. So if the stock is trading below the moving average on the monthly time frame, uh, it means that the stock is likely to <clears throat> encounter more selling pressure uh, going forward. So that has been the case with our stock here in Platz. Uh, if anyone doesn't understand what I mean there, please um, ask me to repeat. I will repeat. Sophie, Faith, I need you guys to focus now. Okay, uh, another one that I'm going to uh, look at is BRAT or BAT. Uh, 
I'm looking at uh, shorting opportunities only right now. I'm not looking at buy opportunities, just short opportunities, not long. You get a trade idea, you check. Is the price on, on the monthly time frame, is the price trading below or above my moving average? If the price is below the moving average, it means that the stock is on a decline. It means that the stock is on a decline. If the price is above your moving average, like it is the case uh, here with um, uh, Brate uh, in 2014, the price uh, broke above, here, or it was trading above here, it just carried on trading above. Uh, that means that that is a buy. You buy that market. Uh, let me get an example of a, a good example of a buy. Let me try this. The stock has been doing very well lately. <clears throat> this is AGL. AGL in 2014. Like I said earlier, together with all other commodity uh, stocks, uh, they came down. Uh, they were under a lot of pressure. They it closed below the moving average here. It started declining. And uh, here in 2016, April 2016, it was above the moving average and it started rising. So if you had bought this in 2014, maybe at 158, 160, today is trading at uh, 321. You could have uh, doubled your money from 2016 to, to 2016. Uh, that's, that includes dividends. Uh, your account could have um, grown a lot larger if you had taken this one. And it was trading above the moving average. It came down for a couple of months, but uh, there is support here. I, I know that you cannot see it, but there is support, I promise you. Uh, that is why the price turned around here. It above the moving average and it went higher again. I'm not saying that you should jump in now and take a long. Uh, that's not what I'm saying at all. Uh, but I mean, it's, a, it's an uptrend. It's been doing very well. I like it. Uh, it's, it has been doing uh, very well, although we have some overhead uh, resistance nearby, that overhead resistance around uh, 325, 326, uh, around 330, there, there is some uh, overhead resistance. But I was just showing you an example of a stock that is rising. You wait for the, uh, the stock to finish the month above the moving average. Once that's done, then you know that you are likely to do well going forward if you decide to go for a long on that trade. Okay, guys, um, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to ask? Is there anything that you don't understand about uh, how you analyze uh, the stock using the moving average? Is there anything that you guys don't understand that you'd like me to help you with? Okay, don't be, you're saying you're okay. Okay, let me test. Let me test you here. I'll use which one must I use? Let me use Xaro. Okay, don't be. What What do you think we should do here on Xaro? We have um our Xaro chart up here. What do you think one should do here?
Okay, I'll make a plan for you, Sophie. Don't worry. I'll make a plan for you. I'll download this on on YouTube and I will upload it on Facebook as well. So you should be able to find it on our Facebook page. Uh, both Stock Market College and uh, Quick Trade Facebook pages. You should be able to find it there. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, okay, Faith, you're saying it's starting to 10, but we should wait maybe until it reaches 160. Hmm. Such a long wait, Faith. That's a very long wait. When other people are making money. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I wanted you guys to have a look at the moving average. That's the main thing that I'm looking at, the red line. Uh, where is the price, where is the stock trading relative to the moving average? Is it below or above the moving average? That's what I need you guys to to help me with there. Is it above or below the moving average? Uh, it's below the moving average. So if it's below the moving average, it means that... Um, it's likely to come down still. Okay, let me check. But you cannot use the moving average alone. You have to use the, all the other factors. Well, on the monthly time frame, uh, we are still below the moving average. Uh, but I mean, the main thing that stands out here for me is that area of um, 131, 132. Uh, there is some overhead resistance there around 131, 132. I expect to see some selling pressure uh, I mean, to come in uh, on uh, Exaro around 131, 132 because of that uh, resistance area that we have there at the top. Uh, I expect sellers to come in and push it a little bit lower. I'm not saying that it should like completely decline. It may not decline. It may just trade sideways uh, to gather more steam before it picks up again. Because I mean, if you check on, if you check it on the weekly, uh, around 123, uh, there is some good support there, uh, as you can see, around uh, 123 here. Mm, there is some good support. That is why that is where we are still uh, trading. And last week we had a positive week, so uh, there's a good chance that we're going to go up there to that 131, 132 area. If we take it out, there's a good chance that we're going to move much higher. Uh, but uh, there is also a falling trend line there. Let me see how the falling trend line looks. Uh, we've broken, we've broken above, we broke, we broke above the, the the falling trend line last week. So, sure. Uh, it looks like uh, this thing has some legs to run still. Uh, if we if we just stay above 123, I think we're going to have the price maybe going up to 131. From 131, we may see the price going up to 150, 150, maybe finally to 170. It is really starting to look good. Uh, you guys, we 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 right we right there. Okay, guys, is there any other uh, kind of stock currency pay anything that you'd like me to have a look at, other than what we've just covered now? Anything?
Uh, okay, let's look at, uh, at them. Let's look at SHP. Okay, thank you so much, Hendrik, for your contribution there. Uh, uh, Shoprite is still uh, looking positive. Um, I mean, over the the, the, the long term um, uh, time frame, uh, although we've had uh, three months of underperformance, we were down 1.34 percent in in March. Uh, April, we were down 1 percent, and so far we are down 4.39 percent. Uh, we went down to touch our moving average around uh, 232. Uh, I've been, I've, 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 I've always thought that maybe uh, 225, 230 uh, is a buy zone on, uh, on, 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 on Shoprite. Every time it comes down to 232, 25, I think that this is a buy uh, zone. Uh, that zone should be bought. Okay, let's check the weekly how it looks. Uh, the weekly time frame is still trading below the moving average. Uh, I think uh, that we may still get to that uh, 225, 226 uh, level before we get uh, buyers that are willing to buy, I mean, to push the price of um, uh, shop right up. So I'm looking at 232, 25 on, on shop right, according to our analysis here. On the daily time frame, we are still trading below our moving average there. Let me enlarge it. Let me enlarge it. Yeah. We're still trading below our moving averages here. Still below our moving averages. So uh, that means that there is still more pressure on, uh, on, on, on these stocks. Uh, maybe over the next couple of days, uh, when the run starts weakening again against the US dollar, like it has started now, we could see maybe uh, the price uh, of uh, ShopRite coming back down to 226. Uh, let us check MRP. Sure, MRP. <clears throat> MRP on a monthly time frame is still looking bullish. It's just that um, it has been do dropping over the past uh, like two months. It has been dropping. Uh, I think it's possible that we could even touch. I don't know, maybe uh, 
241. I've been very, very, very bullish on this one because, I mean, when we had this breakout, uh, we thought that the price was really uh, <clears throat> going to move higher, but that never happened. This was a fake out because it broke out. There was no follow through. Uh, the following month, this is not a follow through and instead coming down. So this month we are down almost uh, 7%. So I think around maybe between maybe 252 and 241, uh, that's where maybe people can look to uh, jump in and grab some uh, Mr. Price if we get some good um, price action signal there suggesting that we should go in and take some longs. Uh, with the time frame, we're still trading below the moving average. We are still trading below the moving average there, below our support. Uh, well, I mean, this was our support is now resistance at that uh, 25287 or 253 area. That is your uh, resistance there. The price <clears throat> from there, I think, should come down to 241, 240. It should maybe come down to 241, 240, where I think people will rush in to buy some Mr. Price there at lower prices. Okay, uh, yesterday we had uh, something that looks more like a doji, although we don't have to have a body, and uh, I'm in around 252, so I don't know how <clears throat> long this will uh, remain in force for. Uh, it may not be there for a very long time, because I mean, if you check your monthly and your weekly time frame, they're all not looking good. I think the only reason why we're looking this strong is because of the range strength that we uh, so yesterday and today. So when the rent maybe starts weakening again, we're going to see the prices maybe coming down below. There's 253, 252.87 down to 241. Uh, that's where maybe people can actually come in and start buying some. Um, Mr. Price stock there. I think that's where they can come in and start buying some Mr. Price there. uh okay guys if you don't have any more questions um we are going to call it a wrap um uh, i mean around uh, uh, around this time and uh, we'll meet again next week uh, tuesday wednesday i'm not really too sure right now uh next week uh, tuesday wednesday i want to take some time off i'm not really feeling uh well i just want to go away and rest for a bit uh, I hope I'll come back recharged, feeling much better, coming up with new ideas. Uh, but I mean, there will be someone assisting you. I think that guy is uh, Hupulam. Uh, he will be uh, standing in for me while I'm away. And uh, yeah, I'll be back very soon, before the end of next week. Ah, uh, guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll try and enjoy my week away. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Faith. Um, I'll get well very soon. Uh, yeah, I'll get well very soon. Thank you so much for attending our webinar and taking time out to I uh, check out what we uh, have to look at today. Uh, the online learning material that is provided, that's what you can use to um, learn more on fundamental analysis. Otherwise, maybe uh, we can just uh, single out one uh, trading session just for uh, fundamental analysis, but I mean we haven't really uh, planned anything around that. But I mean in the near future we will definitely do that if you would like to maybe learn some fundamental analysis maybe on the same platform uh, that we are using right now, the webinar. Uh, we will we will see we'll see. I will forward it to the seniors to find out what they have to say.
You're welcome, Hendrik. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Bye-bye.